we've all heard, don't eat before you go to bed. And quite frankly, it's one of the habits that we follow is three hours before bed, we stop eating. Why? It obviously decreases the sympathetic activity that's going on in our body because we don't have to digest our food. And we know that there's 400 times more melatonin in our gut that's in our, than produced in our brain. That's obviously impacting our sleep. But did that work for me? And so if you look at this study right here, as well as this post I made on Wednesday, it's really kind of showing what I was doing. Purposefully did not stop eating before bed. And then purposely did, went back to the habit I usually do. Simply, again, use myself as a guinea pig. So what did we ultimately end up finding? This is what the HRV curve looked like. And for somebody who's not aware or didn't pay attention to what I was doing, it would be like, oh, well, it really didn't have any impact. Wrong. On the Monday and Tuesday, I did not um, eat three hours before bed. So I actually stopped three hours before bed. On this day, I stopped eating three hours before bed, as well as this day. And so we start to see here one, two, three days that I actually ate late at night were my lowest three HRVs. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, there could have been other factors. Everything else was the same. Everything else in my nighttime routine was the same. I still did my meditation. I still did my breath work. I still had um, brushed my teeth, listened to uh, quiet music, still uh, watched my Seinfeld episodes with my blue light blockers on. All of those things, nothing changed. It was just I ate much later. Now, I can tell you subjectively, I felt very uncomfortable these three nights. And I just felt full. I felt like I was tossing and turning. I really didn't feel good. And it, it, again, because my typical habit is to stop eating three hours before bed. Now, when we go and take a look at the quality of sleep that I had and the impact on those same three days, uh, if we take a look at the Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday nights, let's go across here to sleep. And we see here, again, it's not that I was not getting the sleep I needed on this actually first night, which had a 98 um, uh, HRV, I got 100% of the sleep that I needed. Um, and then on this Wednesday, the 22nd, it was actually, to be honest with you guys, was one of the worst sleeps I've had. I tossed and turned all night. I was up and down three or four times. I went to the bathroom, I think, three or four times. I never go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And it wasn't just pee, let's put it that way. <laughs> it, it was like, it was like my body was like trying to get rid of things within it. And I had my worst sleep um, that I, that I had in that entire week. And then obviously on the Friday, again, just to kind of see what was real, if it was not happening at all, but still 82%. And I had my lowest HRV that night. Um, and so for me, I start to realize, Hey, not eating three hours before bed is actually really important. And it res my body responds in a way that I need to take action on that, or it's going to impact the way in which, again, my parasympathetic system is operating and the quality of sleep I'm getting and thus the quality of rest. And we know how that all comes together and what that ultimately ends up meaning for me. Now, there was a study that I wanted to kind of show here. Again, it goes how we eat maybe as important as what we eat, eating behavior and heart rate variability, a really great study that kind of acclimates this all together. And they looked at five things. So one, adherence to a Mediterranean diet, which again, is, uh, you can read the study in depth, but uh, that's not what I was utilizing. Uh, skipping breakfast, leading le late night eating, having snacks, and rapid eating. And so you'll see here in all five of these, there was some disparity, but the only one that really showed um, uh, after a multi, uh, multivariate regression analysis that uh, skipping breakfast and age were the only parameters significantly associating with lowering um, your HRV. So that is again, why we come back to how are we feeling our body? What are we actually putting into it? And so it was, it was unique that a lot of people didn't actually see that late night eating, uh, impacted them. This is why, again, studies are great to help us, but may not necessarily revert for us. And for myself, this is something that's really, really important. Now, those other people, they could have uh, eaten late usually, and that was just a habit, something that they were used to, something that didn't impact them. There's so many ways that we can unpack that. But 
the awareness that is brought, knowing that it's not just what we eat, but how and when we eat that impacts HRV, it, the study shows that that is the case. But now it's up to us to figure out how that impacts us and our lifestyle. So this is for me knowing, hey, three hours before bed, I got to stop eating because this is something that impacts me at a high level. And ultimately, if I want to be different, if I want to own my different, if I want to own myself and live the best version of me, I've got to take action on it and use the data to my advantage. So again, guys, take a look at what it is for you. We do this to bring awareness. We do this to bring awareness for you as you take action steps and as you start implementing these lifestyle changes to, again, live the best version of yourself. Go on it.